Hey, what's up guys? Got a pretty valuable video for you here today. I want to show you a nice and easy way to set up your renders, get some quality results, um, just get everything looking good, okay? The number one thing I see is just people presenting their work all weird looking, bad camera angles, lighting, things like that. I'm going to discuss all this in this video and um, hopefully this will apply to your projects. Okay, so for this truck here, um, there wasn't a lot to it. The render might look complex, but it's just a, uh, it's an infinite backdrop, and we have a pretty long focal length on this camera, about 200 millimeters. Um, in general, if you want like a more orthographic view, I'll show you the difference. So I think the default's like 50 mil um, on the camera, and you're going to see if I zoom in on this, it's um it has a lot more perspective to it, and you're just going to see that this... This camera angle, it, it, it's okay, it's not very good. Here it is, you're going to see it just, it doesn't show enough, doesn't really show, you know, how powerful this truck is here, but if we set it to like 200, and we press G and ZZ to move the camera out, you're going to see that it just looks a lot more powerful, really showcases the truck here a lot more. So, depending on your scene, you might want to use a smaller focal length, or you might want to use a higher one. In this case, a higher one all the way. Most of the time, I'm using higher focal lengths because I like the orthographic view. It looks better to me, okay? So camera, really easy to set up. Just choose the, you know, the focal length and you'll be good to go. Um, next, you really want to figure out how to position your camera. A lot of people just kind of slap this on like it's no big deal, but it requires, you know, a, a good consideration because, for example, if I aim the camera this way on the truck, well... It, it, the truck looks boring. It doesn't look powerful. It doesn't look intimidating, nothing. But just by kind of positioning, you know, my camera this way, it's a little bit, you're going to see the truck almost looks bigger as I go around here. See that? And once you kind of like view it from the bottom up, it looks a lot more powerful. So if you want anything to look more intimidating, just kind of view it from the bottom up. Just a really basic photography skill um, and you'll get something pretty cool. So yeah, once you kind of figure out that angle you want, you can just set up your camera, find the angle that you know works for you with the focal length, and you'll be good to go, okay? Now, the hardest part here is getting the lighting correct, and this is what I really want to focus on. So let me delete this backdrop and show you exactly what I did here from scratch, okay? Okay, so the first thing I do in pretty much any scene is I drop in a plane. So we're going to go in here, um, drop in a plane. And we're just going to move this plane here right below the object. You want to make sure it's like it's tight because you don't want it to be hovering or you'll get an unnatural shadow and you don't want it to be in here or the tire is going to intersect. So literally zoom in, get as close as you can. Very important. I would not go inside. I would always go a little bit below. You're going to get a nice shadow that way. Okay, really easy. And we're just going to really scale this guy out. I just kind of go somewhere around here at first. Nothing complicated. And then you can always hop back into your camera view just to kind of get an idea of how it looks. So um, there's a few different ways you can do your backdrops. The easiest, most straightforward setup, especially for beginners still getting used to this, is to just use a simple infinite backdrop, okay? And this is incredibly easy to do. Generally, I try to kind of move the plane somewhere over here because for these infinite backdrops, you want to have like a lot of space here in the back because we're going to end up beveling and the bevel is going to roll inwards to here, okay? So what I want to do is take this vertex and control shift B to bevel it and you really want to ramp this up like, I don't know, 50 segments or something really high, okay? And once you do that, literally all you need to do is take these edges, extrude them up pretty high, Alt click on these edges here and then bevel it and give it a good amount of segments this way as well. And you want to push that bevel to like, I don't know, right around here. It doesn't have to be too close. And what's going to happen, also smooth it out. Make sure you do that. What's going to happen is you're going to end up getting this, um, let's go into rendered view. Here it is. It's going to end up looking like, you know, there, there's nothing in the background. It looks like it's just an infinite void. And that's really cool because it brings all the focus into your object. Now, you're going to see the default material is super bright. I always go in here and um, click a new material on the backdrop, of course. And we just change the base color, just kind of drop it a bit lower. You don't want to go too low unless it makes sense, because right now, um, I mean, I guess this could work, but it's a bit too dark for my liking. And I want this to kind of, you know, pop a bit more. So I'm just going to roll the color to, I don't know, right around here. So it's still pretty bright. 
And the roughness is really important for infinite backdrops. I found that the roughness, if it's too low, um, you're going to see that we kind of get like, you might want this effect. And, you know, if you kind of put it around here, it could be okay. But um, where it really gets dangerous is if you have the backdrop set to metallic and it's um, super reflective, then it just doesn't make sense. There's just too much going on. So either make the um, metallic set to zero, so a dielectric material, and keep the roughness low if that's what you want. Or if you want to use metallic, make sure the roughness is really high, okay? And you can turn this off and on and kind of figure out what type of effect you want. I don't really worry about whether it's metallic or not. I worry about what looks good given the scene. Okay, so uh, in this case, I thought a more matte look on the backdrop looked pretty cool, so I made the roughness significantly high. And you want to be careful because since this is set to metallic, if I go too low on the roughness, then we kind of lose that infinite backdrop effect and we kind of get some darker areas here. So I, I tend to keep the roughness pretty high in these types of cases, and you can always go back in here and tweak the base color a bit. Super easy to do. And finally, you just kind of have to set up uh, the render dimensions. Now, this is a pretty, you know, wide shot. This is a very large truck. So I chose to make a 21 by 9, um, you know, aspect ratio here. So uh, that was 3440 by 1440 is what I set it to. If you wanted to go 16 by 9, you could do like 2560 by 1440 or 1920 by 1080, whatever. Um, but you're going to see in this case, it actually looks a lot weaker. And that's why I wanted to have a, a thinner height and a much wider length here. It looks a lot more powerful. And just, you know, default scenes, I tend to go for a 16 by 9. So, you know, you could do 1920 by 1080. I prefer to go higher and scale down, though. Um, but whatever works for you. So generally, you know, 16 by 9 is going to work in most cases. But in unique situations where you want a lower height and a much longer, you know, width to it, um, I would definitely recommend going with a 21 by 9. It's going to look a lot better. And one final tip here. I think you guys will really enjoy this. So right now I have the um, I have the environment HDRI set up, um, which I didn't mention yet either. But I tend to use, you know, kind of like overcast HDRIs. And as most of you probably know, Abandoned Slipway is my preferred one. You can get it for free on um, polyhaven.com. It's uh, one of my favorite HDRIs, so, you know, you can set it up like this, but watch the difference if I, um, you're going to notice I have a sky texture here. Look at the difference the sky texture makes, okay? So check this out. All I have is an HDRI right here, and I connected this up to a mix node, okay? Because I wanted to mix together the HDRI with a sky texture. Now look at the difference here. If I'm just using the HDRI only, it looks okay still, but it's still not, you know, that good looking. You're going to see it's pretty dim. There's no real light coming from anywhere. Looks kind of boring. But if I just give this a little bit of sky texture, you know, they're mixed together. I just give it maybe like 20% or something, just a little bit. If I go too high, the sky texture is way too bright. But if I give it like 20% sky and 80% HDRI, this is a really nice balance because now we get like a little, you know, sun cast onto the front of the truck here and it just makes everything pop a little bit more see the difference there's the before and there's the after okay and you do want to mess with the sun rotation if it's like you know zero degrees it might hit at the wrong point but you can just kind of play with it i found 180 degrees got it at the uh, perfect location right there on the front and this is literally all I do, guys. It's so easy. Um, even if you're a beginner or an expert, you can use the same exact technique and you're still going to get good looking renders, okay? If you're one of the ones that are, you know, beginner or intermediate in Blender and you find yourself trying to create these massive complex scenes, um, you're probably doing yourself a disservice unless you really know what you're doing. Composites and good presentation and complex scenes are difficult so for most people I'd recommend starting here start with a very simple render setup learn how to present your work effectively because this is what is going to build your audience build your portfolio and most importantly get you clients if that's what you're going for and once you've mastered this guys then you can move into composites and you can move into bigger environments and things like that 
So for making it to the end of this video, I want to give you a really awesome gift here. So obviously, before you render something, you need to design something, right? Logical progression. Now we actually have a free course available on our website. If you haven't taken it yet, it is on the design of a sci-fi terminal. It is not for beginners, but if you're used to Blender and the tools, it should be pretty easy to follow along to. We use hard ops and box cutter for modeling and go through the entire presentation from rendering to post-processing. So you can definitely utilize some of the techniques shown in this video and apply them to that mini course. So if you want to pick it up, it's free on our website, link in the top of the description. I think you'll really enjoy it. But that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.